Hello, and welcome to Preparing to Survive and Thrive Homesteading Channel with Charlie B. This week's video is going to be some clippets from what's been going on on the homestead from the 20th through the 26th of June. We will be doing some bug identification, some pest control, some biological effects, and also some foraging and cooking with what we find. So stay tuned, enjoy, get some popcorn, watch the video. Nah, that's not that long. But don't forget, if you find something that you like, please subscribe, like, and share. Leave me a comment. See you soon, right at the end. New week, new video. Welcome to Preparing to Survive and Thrive Homesteading Channel with Charlie B. This week's going to be probably pretty busy and it looks like it may reach up in the 90s here in South Central Pennsylvania and on Wednesday. So I'm trying to get a lot of stuff done. It's Monday and I planted some marigolds. I was told that these would help keep the deer out of my garden. I will put up a fence, but they've been known to jump. I've been weeding and putting down a lot of black plastic. Our peas are coming up, but they are sparse. And my buttercup and butternut squash, winter squashes are doing amazing. My cantaloupes, I planted some um, seeds. They have not started popping up yet, but I bet they will soon. It is supposed to rain for the next couple days off and on thunderstorms. I am not believing it, so I'm going to go ahead and water my garden tomorrow night, Tuesday. I went and planted my beans and my peas on Wednesday and, or not peas, sorry, my beans and my corn on Wednesday last week. And believe it or not, the beans that I saved from the ones that I planted last year have already started coming up. The ones that I'm not real sure what they are. And when I go to water these guys, They are going to pop like crazy. Now the beans that were given to me, let's see how they're doing. The tender green green beans. So far, we do have a few that's popping up. That's amazing. I'll take it. Oh, that's a pretty, pretty, pretty kind of um, leaf that's coming up as the bean pod part breaks off. Our corn has also started to pop up, but just a few here and there. I dumped my cor corn seeds, and I guess I didn't get them all picked up. I thought I did. So this is what came up. I do plant my corn a little deeper than I probably should, but it's better if I hide it from the birds than them eat it and me not have any. So, so far, so good on the beans and corn. We are up here now on the cucumbers and another strange one has happened. This one cucumber plant is starting to die. I am going to pull it up today more than likely it may be a vine borer, but it's kind of strange because they're not happening side by side. I planted some cucumbers on Thursday last week. And you can see I have some already popping up. Not too many. But like I said, when I water them tomorrow, they will pop up and be very, very happy. On this cucumber plant, there is a friend of ours. A little ladybug and this is the strangest thing I've ever seen there is a stink bug pulling a potato beetle away are stink bugs good or are they bad well these are potato beetles As you can see I ripped my glove these are not our friends so if you see them on your potatoes pick them off I pick them off when I see them and I literally stick them in a bottle 
and let them roast or I drown them. So this potato beetle is not in its adult form. It is in a larva stage and it will grow up to be big as it sucks down my potatoes. There is one on the vine. So he's going to go in the jar also. Last year we did not have potato bugs in this potato patch. We had them down where the orchard is now and that was their second year. Seems like every two years or it takes two years for you to be able to get potato bugs. I also have heard that that's a possibility of with other bugs. There's another one of those little varmints in a different stage. He's not our friend. Oh, not at all. I have seen several good bugs. I've seen predatory wasps. I've also seen a ton of ladybugs out here. Um, some praying mantis. And of course we have our honeybees to pollinate everything. There's one of our friends, our ladybug. I'm out here in my sunflower patch, and if you recall, this area up here used to be a riding rink. And after four years of throwing compost, wood chips, sunflower seeds, wildflower seeds, and just letting it do what it wanted to do and mixing it up. We put manure on it this year and plowed it in and then tilled it and planted sunflowers. They're doing a lot better than I thought they would. These are the mammoths. Well, one of my neighbors came over and he gave me some pole beans and suggested I plant, a, plant them along with the sunflowers. Not sure what they're all called. However, this one down here, these are called pink ladies. And he propagated these and we're hoping they will germinate. So here we go. So one thing that is really cool and unique about these beans, the pink ladies, they are supposedly, what I was told, they should have a very large pink blossom. They're supposed to be stringless, even though they're a pole bean, a green, a green pole bean, a green, green bean. I've come down to the other sunflower patch and it's sparse, not doing the best, but we didn't do anything at all to this soil. Nothing. We just... Uh, plowed it up and then took the tiller to it. We didn't even remove the rocks very good as you can see So along the outer row like I did up the other ones with the beans I found these seeds and I'm going to see if they will germinate or do anything Just to see who knows we'll try it Just plant it around the outer rows. I might end up picking up some more pumpkins Or who knows what I might plant morning so it's about 7 45 here today and it's quite it's a nice morning it's supposed to get severe thunderstorms today in south central pennsylvania they're even calling for a flood watch with excessive rain so i'm only going to do a little bit of work today in the garden because i have other projects i need to do inside which is a good day to do them I know it's going to rain because when it gets really humid and it's going to rain, the gnats get horrible out here. So I'm just going to be doing a little bit of work in our tomato plants. So they're doing really nice. Lots and lots and lots of flowers. So I am going to just kind of desucker them. And all I do is I just pop them off like this. See, it's a cute one. I have an experiment going to see if it will actually take root. To then if they do, then hey, we could just plant one big one in the middle of winter, get it going, and then take all of the suckers off of it. I don't know if that would work. Not in my climate, at least not. So of course I just lay them back down on the ground so they go back to nature. The nutrients that this plant is taking from the soil, when it goes, turns into compost or anything else then, um, or it just lays down on the ground, the nutrients will go back into the soil. It's just like putting in raw green manure. And 
and as I go through, I'll also tie them up if I feel that they're going to need tied up. If I find some places where there seems to be a lot of bugs or worms or something like that, I will not leave the dead leaves on the ground. They will go in the burn barrel and they will be burnt. It's been rather warm out here. I We got a little bit of rain yesterday. It was about a quarter of an inch of that. So we're not getting enough rain to really make the tomato plants happy. I went to water yesterday and my irrigation kind of clunked out. Oh, there's Sammy. Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. She's down there helping me. Okay, she's taking a bath. And of course, here's my stash coming through the panels, trying to avoid my cabbage. So today, like I said, I'll just be desuckering them and I will be tying them up. I use just plain and simple Baylor's twine that I picked up at Tractor Supply and this will not be biodegradable. So I will tie, I will take the ties and if they're still good and viable, I will keep them for next year. Just put them in a little container and we'll be happy. So whenever you save the items that you use and you take care of them, you can actually end up saving a lot of money in the long run. So I will be seeing you soon. I'm back out here with the tomato plants, still tying them up. Um, one of my suckers really went wild and started growing big. So instead of break, having to choose between the two different branches, I'm letting them both grow. However, I'm going to make sure they go in a little bit of different directions so they're not crowding each other. I want the air to be able to flow in here and to dry the leaves when it does rain on them to prevent any mold, mildew, funguses, and also keep the bugs from hiding so well in here. The predator bugs, because I want my beneficial bugs like ladybugs to come in here and eat any eggs that there might be. Lots of flowers. So I have more than just flowers on these tomato plants. These are our beefsteak tomatoes. They're great for slicing and putting on sandwiches. And up here, I have my San Romanos that are starting to come on. I have those all over the place. We're going to be eating good. I'm hoping everybody out there are growing, is growing a garden, at least a container garden. I have several volunteer tomato plants coming up. They are a little close and I probably should not do this, but they could possibly be this black cherry tomato that I loved last year, but I did not get any this year. I couldn't find the starts and I didn't have any of the seeds myself. They came in too late. So I am praying, cross your fingers. So I know not everybody likes the technique I use of pulling up the plants that are weeds or that I don't want growing there or cutting off pieces of a tomato plant or peppers or whatever and just leaving them lay there to die and go back into the ground to do my natural composting. But I've been growing plants for the last 25 years and my foster father before this, and this was the technique we always used. Nothing ever happened. The garden was always fabulous. Granted, I did not have a garden this big whenever I was growing them up until the last few years ago, but it always worked and it fed my soil and it fed my plants. So I broke a tomato plant. I went to pick it up and it had been laying down too long, so it snapped. So what I'm going to try to do is save it. I've done this before and it has worked. I'm taking masking tape and I'm going to literally just wrap it around the plant to put it back together. It's kind of like putting a cast on a broken leg to hold the bone in place. If this does not work, that's okay, but it's worked before. We'll try it as an experiment. I'm going to tie it up to make sure it doesn't break again.
The tomatoes are getting so tall. Within a month, they will be higher than the cow panels. Last year, they got so heavy, they literally pulled over these smaller stakes. They're not as sturdy. So this year, in order to prevent that, hopefully to give it more stamina and more strength, stability, my husband put in a really heavy duty spike. So I guess we will see. So I was told there was a tomato blight going around in our area. So what I'm going to do is do my best to prevent this. Any low lying branches of the tomato plant, I'm going to go ahead and click off if it's touching the ground. Because a lot of times blight can be spread through spores that are on the ground that will literally, when the raindrops hit them, jump up on your tomato plants. So I'm just going to cut them with a pair of scissors. And these will all be picked up and put in a basket and put in the burn barrel. But remember, when you're trimming your tomato plants, not to take too many leaves off of. The sunshine helps the plant create chlorophyll. The chlorophyll is what the plant uses to grow the tomatoes and keep itself alive. So be careful. Don't go pruning happy. This is a white fly. This is not a good pest or a good bug. This is a pest in your garden. When a bunch of them come in, it looks like just little pieces of cotton flying through the air. So when you see it, cut off the branches and pray that the ladybugs have attacked its larva. So you might be wondering how I know about white fly and how I know what they look like when they come in in a little swarm. When I lived in town, I had a backyard that was 18 by 20 and it was a duplex so the other neighbor also had an area of 18 by 20. I took both areas and put them under greenhouses. Greenhouse was amazing. I was producing tomatoes in early summer. I mean I'd already have tomato plants in uh, the middle of June growing producing. Problem was the white flies found them and they literally would suck the juice, the life out of all my tomato plants. Not just tomato plants though. They would move on and do it to every plant that was in there. So in the winter time I would have to roll up the sides and literally freeze them out. And then in the early spring, late winter, I could go in and replant. So Joel, if you're watching, a shout out to you for letting me use your backyard back in the day. So this guy is not your friend either. I do not remember what it's called, but smash them when you see them. Do you see this little guy here? Look close. That is a praying mantis that will eat my bad bugs. I'm hoping to, that he will eat a lot. Well, I'm finished up with the lower leaves of the tomato plants and picking worms off of the cabbage, broccoli, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. So they're going in the burn barrel in case there would be an, an insect infestation. And I will be lighting this baby up. Do you also realize that watching a fire is supposed to be very calming and relaxing? It's supposed to be good for the soul. You can see the leaves and everything's in there now. I am going to go ahead and light it up with a torch. It's been drizzling here off and on. So that means that storm's getting ready to come through. It's a good day to, for a burn barrel. Woo, look at the smoke already. So I'm calling it a day in the garden and I'm going to go in and get myself cleaned up and cook dinner and all those other lovely things. Hello, so I've been a little cranky about my hands getting all ripped up and tore up and um, they're dirty. I've washed my hair today. I've done some dishes. They're cracked, they're broke. I'm gonna show you a simple way to get your hands a little softer. And yes, I'm a homesteader and I deal with the garden and I love it. That's my most favorite thing to do in the whole wide world. 
but I'm also a woman and there are health reasons to have your hands nice and not all ripped up. I'll get into that in a minute. So what I did was I just took some sugar, put that on my hands, and I'm taking some avocado oil. I've used vegetable oil and also um, olive oil, any kind of oil that you would normally cook with. I'm going to pour that into my hand too. And I am just going to literally rub them together. Rub them good, get the spots that are all dirty. Rub your nails into your palm. Now this is not gonna make them all completely, completely clean. But first off, it feels good, and you're kind of pampering yourself, and we all need to do that, especially in this trying, stressful times. So one reason I like to keep my hands covered and not end up with cuts and scrapes and lots of bruises, which I still end up with cuts, scrapes, and bruises from working out there, but in a grid down situation, if you can wear gloves, wear gloves, because any type of, and that's Callie that's jumped up on the table. She's off now. That's not allowed, by the way, in my house. But in a grid down situation, any cut could lead to sepsis. It could lead to an infection. So you can't get to medical care, what are you going to do? So in other words, if you can, wear gloves. Whether it's now or in a grid down apocalyptic situation. Look at those zombies, what happened to them? They got bit, they didn't clean it up. They turned into zombies. That's just a funny. So I've rubbed it in. Let's see how well this has cleaned up my fingers. Get underneath my nails a little bit. Now this also works for guys' hands. Um, like if you have a mechanic in your household and he comes home and he needs his hands cleaned up and he's got a dinner to go to, something like that, then he wants them to look a little bit better. So he'll do this also. Any farmer would. And like I said, it's pampering and we need this in today's society. going to take a little bit of dish soap to get the extra oil off, which there's not much because my hands are dry and it really soaks them in. Give them a little dry. Not perfect, but they do look a lot better and they feel amazing. So see you back soon. Remember, a little oil and a little sugar can make your day. Good morning. Charlie V here with... Good morning. It's June 24th on a Friday. Nice morning. I'm a little a little late getting out on the garden, but it's about 8 o'clock and it's about 68 degrees. Um, it rained Wednesday night and into Thursday. I wasn't here yesterday. But when I got home in the evening, I came home and decided to pick worms off my broccoli, cabbages, and Brussels sprouts. They're really bad this year. So, but what I want to talk to you, it's very wet out. So, it's a good day for pulling weeds. And I want to go into a little bit of my soil. I've got a few concerns, but it doesn't seem like anything is really going to go wrong with it. So I'm going to flop you around so you can see my dirt, my soil. So a little background here. We had to have a new well put in late winter and it was raining really, really hard at that time. And we had this beautiful, beautiful black soil here. It grew crazy, crazy vegetables last year. <clears throat> nice, movable. Perfect amount of sand, dirt, clay, and everything. It held water, but it drained really well. So we had the well drilled. All the mud and all the muck came out. Unfortunately, this is what came out of it. 
a clay sandy with lots of rocks. It is crumbly and hard and it is not, it's not the best soil that I would say. Not real happy with it. But we have tilled it in because we really didn't know what else to do. And so this is what we ended up with. Uh, the plants seem to be doing good. The wild edibles seem to be really doing good also. So today I'm going to be raking up this area and some other ones and going ahead and putting down the more of the black plastic. Give you the nice view. There's a slight breeze here too. And I'll be back in a little while to tell you what else I'm doing and what else is going on in the homestead. So with the well came a lot of this type of gravel with the muddy well water and other sand and clay. Well, it lodged on our fence and we had a build up in some spots up to six inches deep of this. When it landed and through spring, the grasses have seeded on top of my black plastic that was holding the weeds down that did a marvelous job last year. As you can see, this has literally grown down into the black plastic. And the little roots have viciously grown through the black plastic. So when I get all this pulled up, I'm going to have to clean it up really well and put black duct tape over the holes to prevent any other weeds from coming up through. We love her well. The water tastes amazing, but boy, did it make a mess. So I'm out here foraging or pulling weeds and foraging. I'm going to put some wild edibles in my salad tonight. My butternut or butter crunch lettuce is getting ready to bolt. So I'm trying to pick as much as I can and trying to eat it. This plant we are looking at right now is called wood, yellow solo wood. Um, don't know if I butchered the name, but I used to chew on this as a kid. It has a kind of a tart flavor. And I just read that it is actually considered a poisonous plant because it has oxalic acid in it. Now you have to eat a very large amount of quantity for this to make you sick or to do any harm for your body. So believe it or not, I'm going to pick a little bit of this and just sprinkle it in the salad for a different taste and a little bit of a different texture. So what we're looking at here is my first cucumber and I'm going to harvest it for my salad tonight. It's a straight eight. It's a little small, but that's all right. It's going to be yummy. We'll see how many more I have out here. So this is what I've harvested today out of my garden. I have a lot more lettuce, but this is butter crunch. And we have cucumbers. They're supposed to be straight eight, but they're looking awful small, more like a pickling cucumber. And our green onions. I'm going to chop that up for the salad. But this is just our domestic crops that we've harvest, harvested today. Let's get to some of our wild crops, our wild edibles. So no salad is correct and right and tastier than with our wild edibles. Our first one here is a plantain. It's also a medical plant, which I'll get into that in other videos. It's tasty, cut up the leaves. This is our, our yellow sorrel. And this is the one that you only wanna eat a few leaves of, not a whole lot because there's oxalic acid. I know I did not say that right, but you can eat it. I used to chew on it always as a child. And this is purslane. It is yummy. And we have our mellow. This is our common mellow. You can eat the leaves, the seeds, the stems, and even the roots. I am getting, I'm doing more research in order to be able to get a long video on this little guy. And of course, we have our lamb's quarter. Now, I hear, and I've seen on videos where people in the city will actually pay big money to get this at restaurants. So I'm going to be picking more throughout the day, but for right now, some of these guys are starting to wilt. I'm going to take them to the kitchen and put them in a glass of cold water. And 
here we have our wild edibles for our salad tonight to go in with our cucumbers, butter crunch lettuce, and onions. We are we've got the mellow here. We have Oh, I can't remember how half of these are called. Lamb's Quarter, Plantains, The Wood Sorrow, and Purslane right over here. So I'll be washing this off, sticking it in my salad, adding a little dressing, and it will be very good and very nutritious. I'm going to toss this up. My daughter is just in time. May die. She's hungry. She might die, but it's all right. Yes, I'm mixing it up with my hands. So, can you find our five wild edibles? Good morning. So it's Saturday morning out here, probably around 1030. I've been in and out of the garden. I've got a couple projects going on. The cistern guys are back to work more on the, on the sides. So that will be in another upcoming video completely dedicated to the cisterns, redone, fixed. So, but what I want to talk about today is powdery mildew. These are my cucumber plants. They're doing really well. I've been getting some cucumbers off of them. What I want to talk about is powdery mildew. It's the little white spots on cucumbers, uh, squashes. That's what I have mainly seen it on. I'm sure it's been on other plants, but in a very small dose, it will not hurt your crops. However, in a large dose, if you don't want to spray it, for a fungicide, you need to cut it. So I'm cutting it, throwing it in a basket, and believe it or not, I will also burn these guys. But I'll have to go through here and get everything cleaned up. This will also give my plants a little bit more breathing room and kind of vent it out so we don't end up with more powdery mildew. But they are looking amazing. I might have him later today. While I was trimming the powdery mildew off my cucumber plants, I found a volunteer corn plant. I am going to leave it come up. And I also have another volunteer in my potatoes, which are looking amazing. That one's really gonna be a good strong corn plant. I'm going to let these grow, and when they come up, I will not pick the corn. Maybe one, I always have to try it but I will let most of the ears go to seed. That way, this will be the second year that the seed has grown in this soil, and that means it's more adapted and will get better results. Now, all I have planted in this garden has been Country Gentleman. It's a heirloom, it's a white corn, it's very good. The stalks get about seven, eight feet tall, they look amazing so we'll see how this one does so it has become a bright and sunny day here it's starting to melt but it's great for the garden and it's great for the solar panels it'll be filling up my battery so i moved over to the shade and took a weed eater down through in between the rows of my asparagus i'll get around and clean them up a little better closer the asparagus as it gets so tall it falls over plus we're on a hill so that helps it and the strawberries. I do not know what kind they are, so I don't think I'm going to get any more. They're more than likely a June bearer. 
They're starting to be taken over by the grasses. I am doing my best to keep them from going to seed this year. There's also a lot of the devil's bagatrix, bagatix, I think is what it's called. I need to do more investigation on that plant to see if I can forage it, if I can eat it, or if I can use it in some other manner and if there are any medical uses. So you can see we have some mellow and some ivy. So off to weed pulling I go. Well, the strawberries are fairly cleaned up and doesn't have to be perfect. It is nature. It is a garden. And these guys I mistakenly pulled up. So I'm going to go get them in something other than just plain water and probably some stigma moss and to get them to root and get them planted where I want some next year. Other than in this strawberry garden. Thinking about spreading out over there. Remember, do you. Don't worry about what the Joneses are doing. Are these little guys just taunting me? So good evening. It is Sunday evening, June the 26th, and it's probably around 7 o'clock, and it's beautifully cool evening. We were supposed to get some rain, and I'm praying for it. It's got very humid earlier, but uh, no rain. It may be drizzled here and there, but nowhere on my property that I can see. I am out here tonight picking up worms. This morning I came out and I planted some flowers to attract the bees. Um, I think they were called Caladulias. I could be wrong. The name was rubbed off the package when I went to see what they were called. I also managed to get some seeds of wild lettuce. Now it is the variety. There's three different varieties apparently. I have the prickly one here on my property. Uh, in abundance, but I wanted the one that would produce the most pain medicine, the strongest pain medicine, in case we would ever need them and we couldn't get to the doctor and all that wonderful stuff if things went crazy, more crazier than they're already going. So this evening I am out picking worms and they are loving my broccoli plants, so I've got to get busy on that. I'll get this video together and look for it. Hello again. Did you enjoy the video? Did you find something new? Did you learn something? Please leave me a comment and don't forget about our giveaway. If you have not looked at the video that stated we're doing a giveaway, please review it and we will um, be giving away some doTERRA essential oils, what it comes down to being. But leave me a comment, ask me a question, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Talk to you next week or even sooner.